Good morning, my name is John Kamara. Welcome to the Kalasha International Film and TV Market. Brought to you by the Kenyan Film Commission in partnership with Ada Animation. We will also say, like to say a very big thank you to our sponsors, Safaricom, Daystar University, and the Nation Media Group. The theme for this year is the future of content creation in Kenya. Very exciting topic. Uh, and our emphasis for today is around animation, gaming, and VFX. With me today is an esteemed panel of guests. And we're going to have a, a discussion around what we think is the future of animation, VFX, and game development in Kenya. Uh, as we all know, recently Kenya was uh, named Silicon Valley of Africa, which also means animation and gaming are part of that entertainment technology that we talk about. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my panel, uh, who are esteemed, and I'd like, to, I'd like them to introduce themselves rather than in doing justice to their reputation. So please, Walter, first of all. Uh, thank you very much. It's, um, I'm glad to be here. And, uh, it's, uh, sorry, um, sorry I, it's an, I thought I was animated, so I thought the sound would just come naturally. Uh, thank you very much, John, for uh, giving us this opportunity and being here. We thank our, our partners, as you've said. And uh, my name is Walter Mongare. I'm the Director of uh, Youth and Development in the Office of the President. My office is responsible for creating link linkages between um, agencies, uh, departments of government ministries and um, development partners, NGOs, to ensure that the, pro the projects and programs that are geared towards the young people uh, get to the intended uh, impact that it's, it's required. And uh, partly, I also belong to the advisory team that uh, advises the president on youth matters. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, I can't say much for the man himself who put all this together. Uh, the CEO of the Kenyan Film Commission, a really good friend of mine, and a futuristic thinker. I'd like for you to please introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, John. My name is Timothy Oase, CEO of Kenya Film Commission. The Kenya Film Commission is the organization that is, has brought you the Kenya International Film and TV Market this year, and we are delighted to host you as we have this conversation about animation, VFX, and gaming. Throughout these three days, the commission is delighted to confirm that you are able to interact with various experts on key topical issues, including what we are going to discuss from now. The overriding mandate for Kenya Film Commission is to create a vibrant film industry in Kenya. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, Tim. And uh, we'll pick up on that in a minute. And on the far side is, uh, again, an advocate for youth development here in Kenya, uh, and also someone who is very passionate about the development of the industry. Mr. Edward, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, John, and thank you, KFC, for this great opportunity. Indeed, uh, Africa is rising as it's well known. My name is Edward Gedeiger, and I'm the current uh, Strategic Partnerships and Youth Director for Adelabs Africa, which is a tech fusion lab, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And uh, we're proud to be here today as the parent company that uh, gave birth to Ada Animation. So we're here to ensure that Ada Animation succeeds as this is what we do as an incubation engine. Thank you very much, and we look forward to a pleasant day. Thank you. So let's dive right in. First question, Tim. I'm sure you know I was going to ask you the first question. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but I'm ready. OK. So one, one of the things that people ask me all the time when I, when I travel, I say, what is, the, what is animation like in Kenya? You know, are they, do we have talent? Do we have skills? So my question to you for us is, what is your commission doing to improve the talent gap in the animation industry? One, and off the back of that question, and Walter, you will come with that secondly, is what do you think is the future of the animation industry in Kenya and East Africa? Thank you, John, for that question. To start with, 
First, it's an appreciation that the creative industries in this country is being appreciated by the Kenyan government as a model industry that when fully opened up will be able to change our economic status by being able to create more opportunities for our young people in terms of job creation. Other than that, as a driver or as an engine that will be able to propel the growth of other sectors, that is energy, we talk about health. You know, the creative industry plays a role of a catalyst to other industries. And by opening up this particular space, we are convinced that the animation or the creative industries in general will create an economy in itself which will be able to help our GDP to grow and create opportunities for all. With uh, an understanding of our mandate, the Kenya Film Commission has a role to create a vibrant film industry in Kenya. And how do we do this? We have various programs that we focus on, especially when we talk about capacity development, because without skills, then we may not have animators in the country. So growing a talent pool that is capable of giving us products that can be able to address or to reach masses in different parts of this country and uh, the world as a whole. Because today the world has become a global village and all audiences are looking for good content. And I believe this country has stories that can be able to traverse nations. So to respond to your question, the commission is directly working at various aspects. We would like to grow capacity in terms of infrastructure. How do we ensure that we there are startups that are being supported in terms of funding, because that's an issue. Without funding, it may not be possible to, to have young creatives to really rally their products to the market. Other than that, talent in terms of skills, skills are critical, because you need to know exactly who is your audience and what you are, you are driving to this particular audience. So at the Commission, we are building that capacity and working with other like-minded agencies in government, like the Ministry of Education, so that we have proper curriculum that will be able to drive this particular agenda. Other than that, we cannot ignore aspects of co-production because we would like to interlink with other nations so that the talent in Ghana or Uganda, Rwanda and other countries are able to combine forces with our own to tell African stories. Because the, 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 the bigger picture here is we, we are looking at how do we grow this market, not only just looking inward, but opening the space for the entire Africa. Remember, within the animation uh, element, we have other aspects. When we talk about transcriptions, translations, dubbing, all these are service industries that we can be able to grow through this particular element. I would like to position Kenya as a country where other developed nations are able to outsource these services from our own talent. And that's why growing talent pool is critical, John. Yes. Thank you very much, Tim. Mm -hmm. Walter, uh, yes. picking up as an advisor to the president, from that perspective, and also in your role as a director of youth development, how do you see the development of the industry from a talent perspective? And what is the government doing? I, I can comfortably say that um, when we are dwelling on the agenda of animation, it's a talent-based agenda. <clears throat> and therefore, uh, it, it makes it very easy for us to identify, <clears throat> nurture, and uh, ultimately expose um, that talent as we also do capacity building to give them space for them to operate. So it becomes an easier way of looking at things. I always say it this, this way, John. It takes about four years for somebody to go to campus, uh, to college, graduate, and start to look for an opportunity. On the side of talent, it takes just identification and exposure. And so when you ask me what would be the government's role in ensuring that uh, this talent is exposed is to first uh, provide policy framework that then supports what we are talking about. 
uh, put legislation in place that then supports whatever agenda we want to give it to our young people. But above everything else, do what we call capacity building in terms of creating the physical infrastructure that supports uh, the agenda of um, you know, giving our youth opportunities. Uh, when we talk about potential of animation, I think the government is the largest advertising entity. Um, and because of what we call public communication. And more and more, we need to be passing these messages to our, our, our citizenry. And, and therefore, it becomes necessary that through animation, through uh, visuals, that's, that's when people get the message. So I want to believe that those are the, some of the uh, low-hanging opportunities uh, that your pool and the pool of young people are out there who are animators can actually uh, tap into. That, that, that is, uh, in, 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 in summary, what I see as the role of government in providing an opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. Edward, yes. very quickly, if you summarize for us, what do you think, as a private sector person, is the role of government in this, the growth of this industry? Indeed, the government is an enabler of both private sector and the public sector. They're the ones who have the most funding and they're the ones who have the biggest network that is available, say even to the donor community and the international development partners. So I would advise the government to really take serious talent, such as animation, because as you all know, uh, animation is a bill, hundreds of billion dollars industry. And right now, when we're facing COVID, it's for sure exactly to note that the film industry where you have film characters and live pictures going on is becoming a very difficult challenge and animation is one of the ways that we can employ these young people. So take a look at Lion King. Lion King is a, is a story that came from Isiolo and yet Africa is full of tradition and rich stories that give us a lot of identity. So the government through the Ministry of Youth and the Ministry of Cultural Heritage and the Office of the President should invest much more and we appreciate what KFC is doing. And us as in the private sector, like you know Adelabs, what we're doing right now by incubating startups and tech companies, we are taking the strong position to lead this pack of private sector so that we can enable young people to be able to be sustainable and financially independent. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pick up from that for my next question. I'll see you go back to you again, Tim. Create more, consume less. Create more, consume less. That's what we hear all the time. So, as a nation, how do we, so we talk about capacity building, it's important, but let's get granular. Let's really, you know, massage the, this flesh of the opportunity. How do we actually get animation creation that we can consume? What are, what are the step-by-step -step processes that you believe, because you're right in the center of industry, that allows us to create more and consume less so that we can also export what we create? So what is it that you are doing or that you think is extremely important, step-by-step, -step, of how we're able to achieve this? Thank you, John. First of all, uh, what we are doing and what the government is doing to ensure that uh, this industry stands upright, first of all is the legal and uh, legislative framework, a structure that will be able to organize the industry in a manner that is uh, key to creating and being able to distribute. Remember, we are talking about products just like any other product that may come out of manufacturing, that's what we are referring to here. Animation, film, and all uh, entertainment products are like any other product in the market. So we have to undertake proper research on what we would like to bring to the market. We need to understand who is our audience. Other than that, put critical strategies, strategies that will be able to, to help these products get to the market. You know, when you understand the attributes of your product or the features of your product, then it's very easy for you to direct it to the, to the market that you have already identified. But core to my communication is that we would like to have animated products that are actually geared to the world market, not just for, for Kenya. Because at the end of the day, if we are able to, 
to attract the outsourcing business. This is huge, a billion dollar business that we can be able to undertake here in Kenya. So in growing this sector, step by step, I, 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 I do believe the element of the market is critical. The startups are also key. We are also looking at what are the controlling mechanisms in terms of the legislative framework and policy framework that will be able to support these particular elements. Of course, we cannot ignore the market like this one, which will ensure that we create linkages between the Kenyan animators and the international animators so that we have co-production arrangements that will be able to give international products coming from this particular side of East Africa. Okay, yes. thank you. I'm, John, I'm not going to ask you the same John, question. John, before you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to ask me the same but question. But anyway, I was going to flip the question a little bit. But Don't go, flip go it. First. <laughs> Let, let's, let's stick on that for a minute. Uh, and I want to, you know, at this point, I want to depart a little bit. Um, Edward here represents um, a local corporate that has to do business. <clears throat> I, I, I don't want to dwell so much on this being a government agenda because it's a business. Uh, the role of government is to provide an enabling environment for you to do business. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to realize that that is an opportunity and that's a business. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much the interest of the government to capacity build mm -hmm. what is in the, in, in the animation or in the film industry, ours, as, as Timothy says, is to create an enabling environment, frameworks, policies that support what you're doing. But ultimately, the responsibility lies with Edward and yourselves to take advantage of the opportunities that are there. I would ask you this. The government has set aside 40% of the airspace as a regulatory framework for local content mm -hmm. consum consuming. Uh, but what is it that we have on our TV stations? We've set that as, as, a, as a bare minimum for local productions. Yes, we know COVID has been with us for the last, you know, one year, and it's not about to leave, so it has changed the way people do business. Uh, in the film industry, there are no people shooting movies in, lo in location uh, because, one, uh, the legal implication for that and the, the, the health implication to that is high. But I want to just, you know, uh, make it... Make it clear that for us, we can incentivize as a, as a government. We can, you know, uh, create a room for the new frontier in terms of uh, young people coming into alternative innovative ideas to do things and provide colleges and uh, TVETs, uh, vocational training colleges for that. Uh, the other thing is, this is an emerging... <clears throat> when it's an emerging tool, it means it has not existed before. And so if it has not existed before, classification is very important. So the government's role is to ensure that we also classify that for it to, uh, for, for, for it to be funded, because no, no, no bank is going to touch you if it's not classified. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is, and, and at the end of the day, what the government benefits from is the more young, the more young people come into that industry, the more opportunities that are created and therefore we collect more money as government from taxation. And, and so it's a relationship that I really want to throw back to the private sector, to yourselves, to, to, to take advantage of that. For us, it's, it's as basic as that. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna hold you there for a second. Don't drop your mic. Okay. Okay. You, so go back to technology. Okay. Can you intentionally for the past number of years, has messaged that this is a place to grow technology, which has allowed the technology industry here to exponentially grow. So the messaging was intentional. Yes. There were a lot of meetings with international partners. There were a lot of campaigns around you know, Tech Kenya. There's even concerts. So there was an intentional approach. So if you're telling me that the private sector, so the messaging is also very important. I haven't seen a message in about animation, VFX, or gaming that is extremely intentional, or a strategy that is clearly intentional, considering that this is over a $2 billion FDI market for the country, if we actually get a couple of things right. So from that messaging perspective, I might disagree with you for a minute mm -hmm. that the government's role is only in the policy and the framework. Because if it's new, as you said, 
then there is more work because as an international partner, I would like to see that the government is messaging right about an industry that, so do you believe that at this point, the message in the communication and the intentionality is right from the government for us to say, okay, private sector run. Tom, uh, Timothy would assist me on that. Uh, and I just want to be brief. It, 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 it's a collaborative agenda, all right? Mm -hmm. One, because you see that as an opportunity from private sector. And for us as government, we then move in and support you in putting the infrastructure in place to support that that you're, 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 you're doing as a business. So I still think it's not just a government uh, 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 per se agenda, but it's a collaborative agenda. As I said, any, op any emerging opportunity uh, provides an, an, um, an, a way for us to you know, make money as government, collect more taxes, and provide more services to people. So it's, 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 it's not a government agenda, it's a collaborative agenda. Okay. Timothy, your Thank you. Just to add on what uh, Walter is saying, first, we need to appreciate that this is a field that is largely supported by technology and technique. Technique will be acquired by the practitioners, while technology will be provided, or the digital ecosystem will be provided by government. So the government messaging, for me, it's very ripe. We have to be able to communicate to the world that Kenya is ready for this kind of business. And that's why products like uh, the Konsa City, where uh, smart city is being set up to be able to enable this kind of uh, transactions is being communicated by the Kenya government. At the same time, access to internet to be able to facilitate the exponential growth of this particular sector is being done by Kenya government to enable private sector to utilize these particular pipelines in order to distribute and uh, have products across uh, all spectrum. Remember, today the way content is consumed is totally different. And uh, when you look at the effects of COVID-19, which have actually brought both positive and negative effects, and for us we are focusing on the key positive effects that have come out of this particular pandemic, where many people, audiences, are actually consuming content using technology, either on their mobile phone and so on. So, again, to re-emphasize that the government has to communicate the right messages, which we are, and we are saying that Kenya is ready by the way we have prepared to be able to produce animated content and film content, and also attracting investors into this particular sector because we would like film studio, VFX studios to be set up in this country so that we are able to offer services to external studios that are seeking for slightly cheaper uh, uh, outsourced services, which can be done here in Kenya very well. Thank okay. you. Yes. Thank, thank you. Edward, I'm going to go to you real quick. Sure. Then, I mean, um, I was talking to one of the uh, big production companies uh, in Canada, and one of the things they were saying is we're looking for storyboarders, and the storyboarder is somebody who just scripts pre, pre and that storyboarder could earn up to $5,000 a month. Yeah. And it's irrespective where that storyboarder is anywhere in the world, because you just, especially the way. So now, from the private sector, I'm going to ask you a question with young people. Do you think the young people that you meet every day come to you and say, I want to be an animator? And before you answer, if so, why? And if not, why do you think so? Because I'm sure you get a lot of young people who say, I have an application period. I have a tech product that I want to do. So do you get the same conversation in the animation space? Uh, thank you very much. Indeed, as where I sit as a strategic partnerships director for Hydrofans, one of my major roles is to ensure that we have young people and we partner with youth. Right? And right now at Hydrofans, we are working together with universities and teams because this is where you find a community of young people who are in the right space so that they can get into the industry. So, like when we announced that we're going to have this animation summit, 
the kind of response I got was so great because most of them were asking how can they be involved, how can they get in on 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 the problem. And I told them at Ad Animation we also carry out boot camps and, and very soon this year we'll be running a boot camp in July. So I believe the young people in Kenya are very hungry for this because the talent is there. This uh, it's a creative talent, right? And most of the youth are tech savvy. So the conversion in terms of them being available and having the passion is there. So what they need, like you said earlier, is the infrastructure. They need the expertise. They need to be uh, mentored. They need to practice this so that they can make their talents perfect. So I believe in the private sector, us at Adelam, we're playing a frontline role to ensure that young people are aware of what is going on. But apart from we doing that on the private sector, that is why, like Walter said, this is a collaborative effort. And that's why you can see private sector and government is here. Because we need to talk and shout together so that the young people can come on board. Because look at the average age of a Kenyan, it's 27. So majority of the population are young people. And if young people don't get involved, then I don't know how we're going to get people. So, so, so let, me, let me kind of stop you there for a minute. Sure. So then let me ask a, a second question on top of that. Why do our companies take their animation work to South Africa? Why do they take it to other parts of the world if we believe the talent is here? I have seen quite a number of companies here who actually do their animation work outside of Kenya. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, because, because we haven't built the industry. You see, what's happening in South Africa is because they have industrialized the system of animation. And that is what Ada Animation and Ada Labs is currently doing. Because you can't expect the human resource to be configured to produce, and yet there's no industry. What is an industry? An industry is a mechanic, a system that provides development, capacity building, and opportunity for expertise growth. So in Kenya, that is what is lacking. But we do appreciate what the Kenya Film Commission is doing and the Office of the President, so that then that industry can begin to be built. And you know very well, John, South Africa is much ahead of us in terms of industrialization. So that's one of the biggest reasons why there's that gap in Kenya, because we haven't industrialized the animation industry or the sector to make it viable and also to attract these young people and talent. And furthermore, to also attract the funding, right? Like you said rightly, it's a billion dollar industry. If we haven't developed the talent and the industry in Kenya, how else do you expect the big Walt Disney and other block people who build this film industry to okay. come to Kenya? Thank you, Edward. Uh, because of time, I'm going to go back to you, Walter. Yeah. On that same question, I know you're in government, but now put on the private sector hat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, that, that will be very difficult to, <laughs> to, to wear that private sector uh, why do you, but why let, do you let, think our private companies go outside of Kenya to do this work? Let, let, let's focus on um, animation for a minute mm -hmm. and, and attach that to talent, mm -hmm. attach that to practice, mm -hmm. attach that to quality. Mm -hmm. And I think the um, majority of, of, of our people want to do animation within one week. And it's very difficult to do that. It takes to create just one character and to animate one character it requires practice, precision, and constant, you know, constant consumption of the same skill for, for you to, to, to outdo what is out there. We have to agree, and, and Edward has, has put it very clearly, that there are countries that are already advanced in a certain area. So one, we, they, they, they have an advantage of time which we don't have, but we are coming into the market. There's, uh, this being a Pan-African uh, conversation, I think I would just dwell on the aspect of, is Kenya ready? That's a question you asked. Um, and I think for us to attract anyone out there to try us, because uh, yes, you can think that South Africa is ahead, but I think the largest pool that we have is talent in this country, a country that's, that is primarily 20 years old, and that means it's consumption. We have mobile telephony up to 99% penetration across the country. We have 4G uh, across the country. And, and that means, therefore, uh, you have a ready market to, to consume what, you, what you're putting out there. What I think uh, then our young people need to do, and thank you to Adalab for what you're doing, is to put meaning 
and put time and resources in capacity strengthening these young people so that we can compete from a quality perspective. And I think uh, Kenya being strategically placed in Africa four hours from any part of the continent then begins to give you um, a, a geographical advantage uh, to, to, uh, to invite people to, to our centers. So um, Walter has led me nicely into my next question for you, uh, Tim. Yes. So we have the infrastructure. Okay, we've been named um, Silicon Valley of Africa. We have the infrastructure, we have the opportunity, we have talent, maybe not completely in animation. So what is the KFC doing, or what will the KFC be doing to help grow foreign investment into the animation, VFX, and game development industry? Because our kids are consuming a lot of these things. Thank you, John. Allow me to also delve into the conversation about uh, Kenya being ready. First of all, I think I'll throw this back to the private sector, that we must have an organized uh, industry in form of uh, either animation associations that are practically working as a, a unit. Why that is important is because when we are, we are growing the talent pool, this talent pool has to be in a certain form of organization that is clearly championed by the industry practitioners themselves. Of course, the government would go ahead and provide an enabling environment and ensure that there are incentives that will be able to attract investments into the country, that we are able to see mega studios being set up here and when that happens, then we'll be getting ready to compete with any other nation in that particular space. So key to your question is that we need to incentivize investors into our country. Yes. So if I then ask you a very direct question, mm. when are we going to see the first one, two, three animation feature films out of Kenya that goes global? You know, and John. What are you going to do? to make that happen. We will we'll be able to do that from the boot camps that we are planning together with the other animation. I believe that is a step towards having products that can be able to go to the world. So you're saying that by next year? We are deliberate that we should be able to have by the year 2023, we should have solid products. Already we have products in this country in form of commercials as well as uh, key series that are animated, but we need to move a notch higher to become commercial because we would like to see these products going out as a business products, not and just entertainment. I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to give you the question, but I just want to make two points. <laughs> no, I just wanted to, I wanted yeah, yes, to but say... I'm going to make okay, two points. Okay. The anime, out of the top 20 movies made for over the past 40 years, seven of them of the top are animation films globally. Lion King, I think, was about $182 million in production. Yes. Now, and there's all these co collaborations happening across the world because, as you said, COVID has rightly brought the world together in this manner. So, you can answer the question with the need that I've just given I, you. I, I noticed that um, Timothy is being very polite and, and <laughs> he's, he's, you know, he's, 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 trying to, he's trying to answer a question that we should be asking you as government, all right? Your private sector. You have a responsibility to, to carry this opportunity that has been created. You, you realize that first the government is grappling with the loss of employment because of COVID. Uh, talk about the film industry that we had incentives, incentivized, incentivized people to come into the country to, to do productions. They, that is not taken place the last one year. That means it's loss of opportunities, loss of, of jobs, and therefore, we take it back to you and say, you as private sector, you as guys who are venturing into this new technology of doing things, how can we help you as government to attain what you're talking about in the next two years? Because the government is not in the business of producing movies, but we can ask you and, 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 and Edward, uh, and working in the office of the president uh, has taught me to, to directly ask the private sector to take charge of what they need to do and us as government is to provide the framework for you to do what you need to do. So can we then give you 
our responsibility that by ne the next two years, we need to see something from the private sector that the government can be proud of. Yeah. Is that your question, Edward? Yes, uh, <laughs> directly you're asking me a question indeed. Thank you for that question, Walter. As you've visited Adelabs and you've seen that we have an incubation engine. What's an incubation engine? It's a fusion tech lab where we use blockchain, smart technology, and artificial intelligence. And right now, at Animation, we've been able to train over 20 animators who are currently working different jobs within our lab. And KFC partnered with us and, uh, last, last, uh, last year, and um, it was a very successful uh, operation. So we as Adelabs, if I can speak for ourselves, we're already championing this. So what we need from government is to partner with us and build that studio because other animation plans to be in the Oscars in 2024. And we have several sets that we've already made, like the last Libon and several other sets that we're working on. And we, we, we are targeting to train 500 animators in Kenya because they have different roles that go into building an animation movie, right, or a set. So we expect government to partner with us and come looking for us now that you can see us here live on TV and find out what it is we're doing and enable us build that studio so that we can compete with the international companies and be able to build that movie, that, that animation movie that will take Africa to another level. And I do appreciate um, our East African partners like Uganda and some parts of Nigeria who are coming up with these animations. But because Kenya has the Silicon Valley, Savannah Silicon Valley in Africa, we are the head, we are ahead of the pack. But now we need you to look at what also private sector is doing intentionally. Don't wait for us to come for you. Come and find us because you have all our data and you know what we're doing. Thank you very much. Okay. So, team then, what would you, what would you um, ask of the private sector be? So, the big corporations here, you know, your Google, your Microsoft, everybody, your Safari Thumbs, who are, what would you ask be in terms of their participation in this industry to make it interesting for a young kid to think that I can have a career in animation or I can have a career as a game developer. Yes, you know, uh, to serve as an example, you have to show. So I'm seeking a private sector to put forth strategies that will foster content creation through technology. And by doing this, we'll be showing the young creatives uh, to emulate what established entities like Adalab are actually doing in the market. And also I would encourage established businesses in this particular field to embrace collaboration, collaborative effort with the key partners from other countries as we, we undertake uh, specific co-production arrangements because the art of doing business of film is more collaborative than anything else. Of course, the government, through the film policy framework, it will be able to provide you with a roadmap that will enable you to, to access all aspects that will support the digital ecosystem in terms of the kind of business private sector is doing under animation. I know I earlier on mentioned technology which is already in place and the government is continually uh, giving the public an opportunity, an array of opportunity for this particular sector to thrive. Uh, we are talking about possibility for a credit guarantee from government which will be able to open up private sector in terms of the banking system to offer you a funding mechanism that will be enable businesses in this particular field to thrive. Other than that, to also promote such markets like Kalasha so that we have linkages between key players from other countries, you mentioned South Africa, uh, actively participating and being able to learn best practices in this particular field. Without forgetting, VFX is critical. I would like to attract more investors in that area so that we have this particular facilities in Kenya to be able to service other destinations. Yes. I mean, once you mention VFX, I'll let you, you know, there is, there is no world-class VFX studio in Africa apart from one or two in Southern Africa. 
And the opportunity to build a VFX studio here in Kenya because of the type of internet connectivity we have, which Walter has mentioned earlier on, could technically bring in the next four years a $3.4 billion market opportunity into here from an FDI perspective, purely from work money that we generate. Because FDI is not only about somebody coming to invest in, it's actually bringing in money for work. And so I'll let you get onto that question. Uh, the, 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 um, I'll, I'll, I'll pick you right on what you said earlier and a question that you asked, how do we, how do we encourage young people to look at this as a career? And, and as government, that is why we, we are also a responsive government that is sensitive to that growth. And that's why we have uh, changed the curriculum from the traditional academic approach to competency-based curriculum, where we have even separated and put sports and art science separately, where we identify young people at as early as three years old, or as early as three years, uh, you, you're in class three or level one, uh, of uh, lower primary school where we identify your talent and we focus on that as opposed to academic this is the one of the one of the one of the other things that the government has has done is to dedicate a whole department to innovation that's why we have ICT innovation and uh, and and youth in one in one ministry meaning we have dedicated resources to innovation and the animation we are talking about uh, which i want to encourage young people to look at as a career what COVID has shown us is that in the next few years, uh, chances of going on location to shoot a movie um, uh, are slim. To shoot a movie anywhere in this country or elsewhere, it takes, about, it takes about 400 to 500 people to shoot one movie in terms of an ecosystem and creating opportunities. So if those movies are not being shot on location, what is happening? the theaters are still available. That means the opportunity has been created for us to take young people into this technological advancement of using animation as an opportunity to create content, and in the process of creating content, then we create employment. And I think that is the next frontier, and, and thank you to Adalab for, for making sure that you're spearheading that conversation in Kenya, and we will continue to support you and partner with you, and that is what I think as government, that is our huge responsibility to undertake. Okay, um, I'm going to switch to game development for a minute because it's also part of what we're discussing. Uh, yeah, um, about a few days ago, last week, Fortnite, I think they, uh, they just raised another $2 billion to build this, what is called the multiverse universe. I'm sure your kids play Fortnite. Everybody's kids here plays Fortnite. You probably spend a few hundred euros every month. And we see a lot of our kids here. I mean, I was looking at the esports organizations here in Fortnite consume again. So Microsoft develops games, every, consume, consume, consume. So game development is part of pure technology. So what is the government, your organization, you also Walter, also doing intentionally in the area of saying, let us start building those infrastructures. We have eight regional blocks in the country to create games that we can consume because we know our young people are very interested and we can't stop them. So can we consume and keep the money in the market? Yes, John. Um, when we talk about game development, this is a very critical area for all of us. First of all, let's just reflect And some chickens. I've come up with is concern. Now, when we talk about advancing this and making it as a way of uh, our culture, we need to just move from this very game into application of technology and have these stories told to the world. So, and the first step is what Walter has talked about the CBC curriculum, the competency based curriculum. It's the first step to actually move from that particular level to the next stage. I, I believe with this particular move, the Kenya government has already started with an understanding that we can actually move this and uh, grow it to make it as a culture which will lead to income to our households. So gaming is another area that we cannot ignore, just like I mentioned. Uh, it provides an opportunity for all of us to think critically and also have our young 
utilize their energy in the right direction. So from where we sit at, at Kenya Film Commission, of course, under the means of ICT, we also are talking about innovation and youth. The government deliberately put youth under the means of ICT because of all these facets that we are talking about. So film, gaming, and animation coupled together, they have a critical role to play in the economic growth of this country, and that's why the government is focused on them. And uh, the key institutions that have been put in place are actually here to provide that enabling environment so that we are able to have this particular sector thrive. Walter? There's, there's something that I'm, 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 I'm keen on, and, and that is uh, developing a unique and exceptional content. I think as a country, a country where we have more than 47, um, more than 47 tribes, gives us a very rich cultural uh, background. And as, as, as Timothy was speaking, I, I noticed that there are stories that haven't been told in a way that then they can attract people. I think that backdrop of diversity in the country provides a very nice back, uh, backdrop for productions that can tell our stories, uh, unique stories, and, 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 and uh, culturally rich stories. That's what I think is also an opportunity for, for people to come and explore However, the caveat here is, how are we telling that story? How unique is our content? How, uh, are, we encourage, how are we encouraging the young people in the animation industry to be keen on, on, on quality productions? Because bottom line, this is about the consumer market. You, you put out a, a great product, people will consume. The product is not good enough, no one will consume that product. Okay, um, Edward, I'm going to go to you with a different type of twist on that same question. Sure. So Walter has mentioned 47 counties, mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, you as private sector, what has been, one, your challenge in how you actually, first of all, create this content? And then two, also, do you think there's also, I still go back to the government, do you think there is a role for the government in say, maybe creating a challenge each county let us develop one game per county and find private sector or galvanize it. Has the government done enough to galvanize other private sector big players to look at this opportunity and help us develop the grassroots of it? Thank you very much, John. Um, first, I'd like to say uh, in a bit disappointment is because of the mindset of the young people because these are the biggest consumers and also where the talent pool is. So we have a mindset where we, de we look at everything from the Western perspective. And even when we're doing this animation and gaming, we try and build games built onto the Western perspective. And this is one major challenge, so that you can't compete with them really at their level. So we need to now start ensuring and inculcating and mentoring our young people to look and to appreciate what they have in our own cultures. We need to come up with games and, and, and productions that talk about our own lifestyles in Africa and give the story of the African story, right? So that when it goes out there, even the consumers out there would be interested. Look at the number of tourists who come for safaris in Africa. They're interested in what is going on in Africa. But immediately we come up with gaming and content that is from a Western perspective, we go wrong. So this is where I'm calling on government. When they are doing the 2021-2022 budget, they need to increase that budget and ensure how they will increase it to a high level so that that money can then reach to the young people in the villages. And as you said rightly, we have 47 counties, we have eight regional blocks. What is the government, county governments, and national government Edward, doing this? Edward, we have to this? stop because of yes. time. Yeah, I you. want to take one last comment from each person before we have to round up. Tim, you had something to say? But great, great comment. I just want to start on uh, what you mentioned. When we talk about the 47 counties, we are talking about the Western Africa region. Yes. Because that's the region that we're talking
So 47 animated stories and 47 game developed across 47 counties using the concept of My County, My Story, which we can sell to the global market. So that is an outcome of what we're, we're finally. So Walter, this is our uh, outcome I, of this discussion. Thank you. I, I would just uh, conclude. And thank you very much for, for this, uh, Timothy, by the way. Thank you for putting this together. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, John, for, for the wonderful opportunity and uh, your, your support system, Safaricom, and everybody else who's supporting you. Uh, Edward was, uh, made me laugh when he was um, acting like an activist, trying to tell <laughs> government to increase budget. And I just wanted to give Edward comfort. Edward, that the government is keen to support any innovation so long as it's justifiable. And so it's the market that needs to justify whatever we need to prioritize and, and budget for. Uh, we'll continue as government, continue to incentivize um, uh, the animation and the, the new technology and innovation in telling stories and creating content. We will continue to capacity strengthen where we need, and that's why we have the TVETs, that's why we have the vocational training centers. We want more young people to go into talent-based. We will continue to you know, um, advocate for classification, as we said earlier on, for this new technology to be fund uh, fundable. And at the end of the day, at the end goal, it's in the best interest of government to have as many young people engaged meaningfully for livelihood, uh, for the government to, to advance, and for the, the, the lives of people to be better. Thank you. Um, I know you want to say something, but we're literally out of time. Right. Um, we will continue this conversation. Sure. Um, but I think this has been a lot of fun. Uh, a whole lot of fun. I mean, it's way more fun than I expected first thing in the morning. Um, a couple of things that we've taken out of this is, um, if you're watching, Kenya is ready. We are ready to become a dominant player in the animation industry. We're ready to be a dominant player in game development, not just consuming games. We're also ready to build world-class visual effects studios here that will transform even the way content is made, not just here, but still in our services to it. And why are we ready? It's because we have the talent. We have the infrastructure from the government. We have the economic landscape, as you can see the growth of technology in this country. And we also have the mindset of the government and the people in charge running because they believe that this is an industry. So for a young person thinking, can I have a successful career in animation, in gaming, or VFX, the future is the oyster. You must decide how much work you want to put into it. I think if our partners, Disney, Big Stars, um, Universal Studio, DreamWorks, if you're, as you're looking for new places to nest your egg across the world, I think Kenya has opened the opportunity because you've seen the likes of Google, Microsoft, and all these big companies turning Kenya into their headquarters, which already means that we have the infrastructure required. Now is for us to engage with you. And to all our other donor partners, we also believe that the time is ready to engage with the KFC and the government and the private sector to say, let us create amazing African content. Thank you very much. My name is John Kamara, and wait for the next session around growth and development in, in animation. Thank you to my guests. to a great story is a believable write-up. Nikundani! <laughs> that transcends borders and sets to ensure the audience get glued and the crew are motivated enough to People, engage. The movie is on! 
yani tuko ndani kila shot lazima iwe perfect because every angle matters niko ndani boss great shots are coming right up. every ounce of energy digging in to give a wider scope of the job at hand i love it a minute what's it this is our time tuko ndani tuko ndani tuko ndani toned up faces that display courage in the midst of lights and an always wanting theater with art that reveals the identity a time most awaited showing off the acclaimed character in a role played to perfection no 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 i am more in than you no i am no i am no i am hmm. oh you making me so mad <laughs> you oh i, I guess, guess. To Kondani. I am all that you associate me with in the film industry. I am Kenya Film Commission, tasked with ensuring your filmmaking process is a smooth sail. And I can only do it if all you filmmakers are registered with me. Since it is a requirement by law to be registered and certified by the Kenya Film Commission. Pamoja, tutajenga hii industry and beyond what's your excuse ya kutokuwa ndani j uko ndani register today at www.kenyafilmcommission.com this is a video uh, streaming platform primarily designed for mobile mm -hmm. and uh, with base we basically want to offer content to kenyans we are saying um, base we want to position base as a home of best local content. Mm -hmm. And on base we want consumers to come and find um content that entertains them, that informs them, that motivates them, then of course inspires them. And a session like this Base Creators Garage is actually content that's available on base where mm -hmm. people can go and watch and be uplifted and learn from other uh, content creators that have gone ahead and succeeded and actually um get something from it. It's very important early on in your career to understand ownership is the end goal mm -hmm. and you're in this for the buyout. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm I'm making this sort of soul music right now because it will be valuable for me in the future. Mm -hmm. And so I have to really make sure that my split sheets are in order and all the rights holders in my music are in order. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at Midnight Train, your average song has even 3 to 4 writers yep. and it's deliberate so that we get the best mm. but also it's important that your stakeholders your writers and everybody everybody knows what they own where how quite a number of uh, content creators had put together projects and netflix actually came knocking but when we did 40 sticks we actually intended it to go into uh, theater movie theaters mm -hmm. but when corona came in then we had limited uh, choices in terms of platforms that we could place the movie so luckily netflix came knocking they actually came into kenya um asked to meet with a number of content uh, uh producers and we were lucky to be called into the meeting so everyone was able to present and we were lucky to be one of the ones to be picked uh for our content We had just uh, quit from our jobs, even myself. So we took what we had uh, accumulated over the years, like our pension, the kidogo that it was, and then we, we, that is what we put in. And then we borrowed. We borrowed from family, and then even the location itself we got from Eve's uh, sister where they were living. They, got us the, they gave us the place. And I, I, I owed even my mother-in-law. <laughs> that was how bad, <laughs> how, how bad it was. But we had a vision and we knew this is what we wanted to do and we were going to get there somehow. For nearly five decades now, Daystar has been starring passions, supporting and shaping career aspirations as it develops transformational servant leaders for Africa and beyond. I have been blogging for a couple of years now and blogging has led me to a world of research which includes a lot of writing and blogging. To be honest, my passion for writing was birth at Involvement, which is a student-led newspaper at Daystar University. I 
was made at this time. Book your intake now and be the next. Call us or visit www.daystar.ac.ke for more information. Guys, meet Alison, my fiancé. You're the one stealing my best son away from us. <laughs> I am. Welcome to the Jambo family, where I am the official black sheep. <gasps> Come on, Jason. What do you think you're doing? Hey, hey. This is my this. Just what are you doing? Hey. Bring, bring, bring my chicken back. Come on, Jason. Ah. You. Come on. You, that's my chicken, that's my chicken, Justin! Fireman. You are going to strangle my son because he broke a glass. What more? No. You have no right to call the police on your brother, do you understand me? But he's a thief! He's a criminal! Oh, shut up! I'd love to go up in flames. This is confusing. I shouldn't be. I'm all going. This is a celebration of 40 years of marriage between your mother and I. And we all have to be there as a family. I'm all part of this family. You disowned me yesterday, remember? But my head feels naked. And change the head, not the wigs. Mom, I don't think that wig and head drop goes with your dress. Mom, and change, eh? Yeah? yeah. Okay. For goodness sake, never, ever, ever mention wrong anything, clothes or color to your mother. What? Why? I was just commenting. This reminds me of our wedding day. She kept the whole church waiting for one whole hour as she tried to dress up to look nice. When she came out, she looked uglier than she was before makeup. How can anyone look so horrible? Dressed up like that. Oh, what's wrong with you, women? Father, my book tells me so. Mabrigan, Mabrigan, number 28. My family is so embarrassing. I'd want you to remember me as... as a brother who was never fake. Jesus loves me. You. Iche micheni ya maji itapatia maklianzi wako maji safi kwa miaka mingi zijazo. Ndiyo hii. Ame kukata. Kubali matokeo. It is a simple accident. Tukina waters! Tukina waters! Babu! Mvufi wa dadi kwa hivye, umetuletea nile? Mampena. Umerudika nisani? Hapana, nilikuwa nataka advance za pesa za dawa za ubi. Tell him that money is charity money, not a salary. Hadithi, hadithi. Hadithi njo, uongo njo, utamu kulea kulea. Hapo zamani za kale, zuhura, Biti ya mfalme wa mbinguni na kausi mungu wa bahari walisema na situ mfanye mtu wa dunia kama sisi awe na sura na mwili kama zetu.
Unajua nilikuwa nadhani ni ndoto lakini ni kweli kabisa uko hapa. Siniokope. Na shuku niliona jini jana nikivua samaki. Na shuku. Nilikuwa kama binadamu lakini halina miguu. Ni mkia wa samaki. Ukiliona ile zimu tena likamate. Hebu fikiria watu wote lipa pesa ngapi? Kuliona tu kwa macho. What you're doing here, Babu, is a crime against God. Against which God? There is only one true God. There is only me. There's only me. Beware, Babu. That thing is an evil spirit. Who knew Chawi? Jini. Pepo mbaya sana huyo. Mwakilishi mkubwa wa ibilisi. Oh, si uchawi. Niki ni macho. Watu wanalipa kisha wanaingia. Huu ndio mwanzo wa utajiri. Nataka niambie venye wewe unafanya hiyo magic yako. Sijui. Niambie. Ni niwe. Ni ndio mita. Nitaziri kukuumiza kama hauta ni. Ni please. Eh? Unajaribu nini? Uchawi gani huu? Ni jini la maji. Mkweli ulimvua baharini ndio Kuvu yake ya ajabu Hadithi 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 njo uongo njo tamkolea Umekolea kweli Leo hadithi hii ni kama sinema Hello and welcome to day two of the fourth um, Kalasha International Film and TV Market themed The Future of Content Creation. Day two is all about animation and this animation uh, summit is brought to you by Safaricom, Daystar University, Ada Animation and Nation Media Group. My name is Irene Kuria. I am a co-founder at Ada Animation, and today I'll be moderating a panel called Growth Opportunities, Development Plans and Threats for the Animation Industry in Kenya. I have such a vibrant and interesting panelist, and uh, my panelist includes Nadia Adiambo, the one and only animator. Amazing story. Nadia, I can't wait for you to share your story. I Karibu sana. I have uh, Brian Barasa. Uh, Nikon co-founder. Brian will tell us about Nikon. Karibu sana, Brian. Thank you. And uh, we also have Steve Kimani, an AR and VR developer. Karibu, Steve. Thank you. Glad to be here. And Hato Muhato, Chair for Association of Animation Artists in Kenya and also founder and creative director of Tsunami Studio. Karibu. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's just start by, first of all, getting to know you a little bit better, starting with you, Nadia. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Nadia Adiambo Oluwachulunya, and I am an animator and pianist, and I am the founder of Nalo Studios. Mm. And I work from my small green home studio um, in Nairobi. Awesome. Yeah. And what about the exciting things that you're currently doing with Netflix? Ah, uh, sure. Um, <laughs> so the contract has closed for now, but yeah. I recently started doing character design work for uh, Netflix feature animation. Um, I can't speak more about the project now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but it was a really amazing experience mm -hmm. and one that was actually catalyzed by COVID, funnily enough. Um, I'm also doing work for other North American studios, and the beauty of this period is that I can produce work, be close to my support systems, all from like the comfort of my home because of the internet. Oh, that's awesome. Brian. All right, like you said, my name is Brian Barasa. I am the co-founder of Nikon uh, Limited. That's the Nairobi Comic Convention in full. We are a digital platform for creatives to showcase their work, enhance their skills, yeah. as well as uh, collaborate with other players in the industry. Uh, we've been in existence since 2014. That's when we first had our 
uh, maiden event. Since then, we've had so far eight editions of a physical Nikon event. Last year, due to COVID, we did a virtual experience called Comic-Con, which is just a play on uh, the online space, Com-Econ. Um, and uh, for, most importantly, we come from the perspective of being fans of animated content, mm -hmm. comic books, and gaming. Mm -hmm. So we, in a way, speak for the fun in the industry, and we enjoy the content that is being created in the creative industry right now. That's awesome. What about you, Steve? Um, my name is Stephen Kimani. I am an AR VR developer at Black Rhino VR. I, am, I was professionally trained as a designer slash animator, but um, through experimentation, curiosity, I found myself into this tech space that I really, really love. And um, yeah, I'm glad to be here, glad to share more, and looking forward to more interaction. Thank you. Hato? Hi, everyone. I'm Hato Mohato. I have studied animation for, I think, 14 years. Um, I studied in, I first started here when there was no animation. <laughs> it was multimedia, I think we were studying multimedia and communication. And then I went to City Varsity in South Africa. From there, after I was taught, I said, no, I'm coming to Kenya, and I'm going to figure out animation in Kenya. Now I'm here. Um, I am the creative director and founder of the Tsunami Studio. We cater to animation, sound, and illustration. We want to bring imagination to life. I'm also the co-founder of Anime Cafe. Uh, we love anime, and we brought the... F um, sorry, let me bring that back. I'm the co-founder of Anime Cafe, partnered with Movie Java, and we brought the first ever anime festival to Kenya, Otto Matsuri. And I'm also the chairperson of A3K. And we want to, uh, the Association of Animation Artists Kenya. And we want to bring animators together. Because with Unity, we can move forward. That's awesome. So uh, I'll start with you, Nadia, ladies first. So uh, you're an animator. You're having an amazing career. And there's a lot of people, young people especially, who are interested in getting into the animation industry but don't understand where to start, how they can commercialize their work, and how they can uh, chart a path you know, yeah, into a um, um, successful animation career. What can you say about it? And how can you share your story uh, in relation to that? Sure. Um, so I'd say the journey um, is rarely taken alone. So for me, um, I was supported by my family from the jump. I know a lot of people have stories where they're like, I want to do cartoons. And then your family is like, get a real job or like be serious. <laughs> yeah. But for me, from as early as like three, my parents recognized that this was a discipline, not just a pastime. So at every single stage of my career, there have been an unwavering and consistent and generous support system. Yeah. Um, I'd say for people who don't have a similar structure, um, finding like peer groups where you're able to challenge each other. Because I remember when I was in high school, there was a girl, shout out Kimberly Mwamburi, who was like the fiercest draftsman I'd ever seen. And she would always push me to like go harder, draw, draw more, practice more work on perspective and technique. Um, and then in terms of having an actual career based in Nairobi, um, there's many ways that illustration or graphic storytelling is harnessed. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most lucrative right now is social enterprise spaces mm -hmm. because people use comics and animation to communicate health messages or like to speak about like very agenda with very agenda driven stories. Mm -hmm. So that's actually, that was my first job. I started working at Shujaz, um, and that was an amazing experience. Started there 2009, and for those of you who don't know, Shujaz is all about, or Shujaz Inc. Um, is all about harnessing the stories of young people, young Kenyans around uh, the country, and trying to find ways to have practical solution to day-to-day -day problems or to celebrate um, their day-to-day -day experiences. So that was my first job. Then after that, I studied uh, animation at Sheridan College in, in Canada. That was amazing. And again, as much as the facilities were fire and the faculty was also so amazing, it was the peers. Like people would really push and people would absorb principles and concepts and interpret them in such different ways because they were from all over the world. So that again, everybody there was the kid who used to draw in their class. So that specialness 
just forget. <laughs> and then you just have to work and work. And even now, like, my support systems, ultimately they're the same. As much as my craft and my practice has grown, the same cheerleaders have been there. So I'd say if we can find ways to cultivate communities, which I think Akina Hato are doing with A3K, um, that's an invaluable part of the process. Now that's amazing, and I'm happy you're talking about communities because uh, we have Kaka here who uh, you know, launched Nikon, and the entire purpose is to build a community of animators and gaming. Tell us about Nikon, and especially um, looking at how the industry is evolving. You know, what are the challenges that you're seeing, and where are the gaps? So when we first came into industry doing Nikon, we pretty much had the pillars that we wanted to deal with. Mm. So comic books, animation, and gaming. Pretty much those form the basis of what uh, Comic-Con is. We saw a bit of success, because at the time it, it was very, it was very fragmented, uh, if I could use that word. We didn't know many animators, we didn't know many um, comic book artists, and like Hato said, practically animation was more or less missing in, in the industry. So there was a bit of a challenge getting the right people to work with at Nikon. So we're coming at it from the perspective of, we want to get animators to Nikon so that they can showcase what they have. And what we realized is that there wasn't a lot of um, consumer-centric um, animation that was being done at the time. Most of the work was corporate focused. And uh, conversations we had with a lot of the animators, including Hato, was how then can we take a step back and support you as the animators because you're not at the moment creating anything that would go to say the local television yeah. stations for people to enjoy. Yeah. You're looking at clients, so how do we do that? And we had to rethink um, the strategy for how we engage with animators for a bit of time we only done bare minimum. So coming back and saying, okay, fine, the animators in Kenya are looking for uh, opportunities to interact with clients. Um, they're looking at uh, avenues for them to grow their client list in their database. So how then do we partner with uh, mostly international um, entities, uh, which we did sometime in 2017. We partnered with the African Animation Network, which is a Pan-African body that supports an animation throughout the continent. Yeah. And this is done through um, the major comic cons around Africa. So we have in, in East African region, Nikon. In West Africa, we have the Lagos Comic Con. And then in South Africa, we have the Icon uh, Comics and Gaming Convention. Yeah. So um, we are able to work with these bodies to uh, give animators a stepping stone where they can, first of all, if it's uh, meetings on demand, where they can be able to uh, work with the corporate uh, clients. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, how then do we come back and create uh, that demand or that uh, expertise where more animators are creating content that we can then watch uh, regularly, we can consume. Like, mm -hmm. I know something that's been missing for a while is um, kids' content. Yeah. Um, for example, we've grown up watching a lot of Western cartoons. Then how do we create an avenue for the animators who exist, or even those who are coming up? Because you'll find that most of the uh, traditional animators were consumer folk, uh, sorry, client focused. Mm -hmm. How do we help um, animators who are coming up to be more consumer focused, that end consumer who watches something on the telly or, yeah. or YouTube or whatever. So that led us to a strategy that says, let's uh, create cohort programs where we support the animators, um, get the skill, which comes part of our enhancing the skill, they get the skill uh, through already existing animators. They are mentored, uh, taken through an internship program. And then eventually, when they have the skill, they'll be able to form their own studios and create employment mm. so that um, we can get to see more local animated content because that's what's been missing in the industry. But, but even when you talk about seeing local animated content distribution, where, how are the platforms that are there uh, talking to animators so that they can showcase some of this content because I feel like there's a lot of um, talent in, in the market but the issue is how is it distributed to the, that end consumers because there's so many platforms that one can get on. What are you seeing around that? So we do appreciate that there's a gap that exists when it comes to the distribution. Um, and our approach is not, we, we're not under the illusion that we're able to do it all at the same time. Yeah. So for us, we say let's, let's first focus on um, 
creating a pipeline for that content first to be created as we have conversations with relevant um, stakeholders who are able then to pick up the distribution. Part of the, con the engagement I mentioned with the African Animation Network is now to create that uh, rapport yeah. and especially with bodies like um, ANESI, uh, which is an international festival that happens in France. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at local bo bodies like uh, DISCOP, which is a market that happens in South Africa. Yeah. So how do we, using those channels that we've already created, once we've figured out the creation bit of it, then how do we connect them to the distribution channels that now we'll be able to distribute across the, the continent. And that's the focus of the African mm -hmm. Animation Network, Network, which we are part of. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great. And then, Hato, you have uh, an association. You're leading an association that is also looking to support the animation industry. How, what can you add on in terms of animation content and distribution and how the two can be bridged? Animation content and distribution, how we mm. can bring the two together. Yeah. So realistically, let me just manage expectations. In, uh, in Kenya, it's very hard to get a broadcaster to actually pay for your content, mm. right? Um, I went to Citizen some time back. I was going to, I think, to Nation and Citizen. I went to Citizen uh, with my idea from the studio, with our idea, sorry, with our idea from the studio. I was like, yo, you have an idea, check it out. He was like, no, 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 no. Uh, you have to understand economies of scale, mm. right? So. If you're going to bring this content to me, you can probably tell me you have this amount of views. You have, like, you can bring your views as currency. Mm. So you need to build a demand, right? So for, for how they this, this see it here, we have to actually already have the funding to create the content. Mm. Then they can actually provide the platform, because he mentioned he could give it to us for free, right? But we still have to look for the funding ourselves. He said, the majority of them said it's too costly for them. Because mm. animation is really costly. So it was too costly. Um, so the best approach right now is to look for online platforms. And really, um, advertising right now and marketing is, is cheaper than it used to be. It used to pay, I think, 100,000 plus <laughs> to be on the newspaper or on, uh, on, the TV, on the TV. Now you can pay 1,000 bob and people have seen your content. So these are things now we should think about, using the platforms that are there. Mm -hmm. And also quality of, of output, our quality needs to be good. Right? So this is something now we need to figure out. This is why I like what KFC, KFC is doing. We need to start thinking about licensing. We need to start thinking about, um, I think I was watching a talk yesterday. Um, if you have a video, you have your phone. You, have, you can, most, everyone right now can be a filmmaker or an animator. Yeah? But who, what sets you apart from the people who've been doing it. How do we say that we are professional? Yeah. Quality or? Well, yeah. But now how, like let's say the international people want to look at us. Um, how do we, how, how do I bring it out? Um, like standardization. Yeah, how standardization. Yeah. How do we standardize? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that, okay, that's my question. Yeah. So now for that to happen, we need to license and we need associations such as A3K, Scriptwriters Guild, a way for us now to figure out how to standardize and control quality, mm. and then now we can figure out distribution. Yeah. Is that uh, a good answer? No, no, it is. It is, and, and this is an open discussion, so oh. feel free to add in. Looking at the eyes, <laughs> that's scaring me. But, uh, but I want to bring it uh, to Stephen now, like uh, animation meeting technology. Yeah, you're in a very interesting space. How are you seeing uh, that industry of AR, VR growing, and, and where are the opportunities? for uh, people who are looking to venture into it. What is it? <laughs> okay, it's interesting that you'd say that because um, I remember the reason why I actually got into AR and VR was because um, at school uh, when I studied at the Technical University of Kenya. So yeah, hoot hoot, <laughs> alumni. <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I, I wanted to know about AR and VR just to stand out from the market. So uh, or to be honest, I didn't think that I'd like it. It was just a sort of an experiment. So I said, let me try this out and see um, how much I'd stand out in the industry. And I ended up liking it. So let me take you a bit back and give you a brief introduction into what AR, augmented reality, and VR, virtual reality, is. So AR is simply a superimposition of a digital item on top of existing media. 
that might sound complicated, uh, but let me just break it down again further. So, uh, for example, you have a poster. This, this might be like um, an ad poster, a flyer, something of that sort. And uh, when you project your phone or when your phone camera sees that piece of paper, you just scan it and uh, content comes in. So it might be a video, you might have links like buttons that lead you to different social medias, you could have like it's it's the, the honestly the possibilities are endless and then now again they're, they're also analytics so um, as compared to the normal billboards that you see um, using AR you actually have analytics in the back end so in case I want to see maybe how many people scanned or rather viewed my content there's back end that I can actually see and see these people scanned so that is augmented reality so virtual reality is what is um, is a bit common because people are usually usually see people wearing headsets and then they're screaming <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so virtual reality, um, you have to have the VR headset, which you, it's a head-mounted display. You put it on your head, and then you're in a totally um, uh, virtual world. It might be a film, it might be an animated series, it might be um, a documentary, and it also might be, as you're saying, um, a game that, uh, which, which uh, and, and the best, the best case scenario for VR is, uh, horror movies because they freak you out and that's what people like seeing. So yeah, um, I don't know if I answered all yeah. the questions. Uh, opportunities in the in the in that industry. Are you seeing more and more people uh, wanting to get in it? Are you seeing more demand around? Uh -huh. Okay, it's interesting because um, the demand is there. Um, we usually okay at Black Rhino VR we usually have hackathons and uh, there are programs that we are launching, and uh, there's one that we recently launched called State of the Art and the applications were overwhelming. We'd never thought, we never thought that we'd get like demand for such. Mm -hmm. So state of the art in itself is, um, it is a project that uh, uh, Black Renu and Gota Institute partnered to do. And the intention of it is we are empowering artists and creators with VR tools to create um, AR and VR content. So the, the, VR, the VR headsets usually have applications that you can create content on. So like for example, there's a famous um, application known as Tilt Brush where you can paint. So someone like Nadia, who is an animator, can actually get into this field and instead of using um, a, a tablet draw and then you'd consume the content on a screen, uh, she can actually create a whole world that you can get into and be part of and like experience the whole thing all together. So um, in terms of opportunities, I think that um, the market is very new and I really, I really believe in it, to be honest. And I think the earlier you jump on it, the, 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 the better you'll be because um, right now, like, we are the ones forging the way as we're going. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about it, since it's not only new in Kenya, it's new in the whole world. Yeah. Like we are, the, whatever solutions we come up with, uh, maybe might be actually a solution that will be relevant and will be very impactful in the whole industry in general. So as, 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 um, as starters, as founders in this whole field, I think that the journey, the, journey, the journey will be really interesting and I hope that some of you might actually come on this side. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Nadia, now to you. How, I mean, how difficult is it for an um, animator and artist, a creative, to commercialize their work? Especially you know, with the issues that we just spoke about where there is limited uh, platforms for uh, distribution, but then you have an entire world, you know, that has a thriving animation industry. How does one get into that world or tap into that industry from beyond Africa perspective? Um, I think it would be a two-pronged approach. So first, consistency. Mm. And then second is building and sustaining healthy um, ecosystem relationships. So if you're working with somebody, try to like respect them. And if you've made an error, like admit that you've made a mistake and always hope to build healthy community because that for me is what pushed the door open. Like to give um, Netflix as an example, um, I'd been wanting to work for them ever since they opened their animation division mm -hmm. in 2018. And I'd apply also aggressively, like every month, just sending portfolios. And when COVID happened and they began to recruit aggressively back, I also started pushing, started like sending more portfolios. But that wasn't what did it. What actually got me through the door was a friend of mine who was already working there. And they 
passed my portfolio to the, to the director on the project, and then they DM'd me on Twitter. So there are these formal channels as well as these informal ones. And I think it's really important to always move with integrity as far as you can and hope to heal when you messed up. Um, in terms of consistency, like you always have to be hungry and be hungry for rejection. Mm -hmm. Like if I was to show a screenshot of how many do not reply emails I have received. <laughs> like it's wild, but you still have to keep going. It's like they'll be like, or we don't know where to put you, or this is cool, <laughs> but we can't make this because we don't know why you're this. But you just have to just keep going and keep taking on their notes. Because sometimes, in terms of industry standard, they're not always wrong. Mm. Like, if they're saying they want a certain kind of structural integrity from your work, build, like, grow, learn another skill. Like, I think it's important to remain malleable. Like, just an example of that, um, I had an opportunity in 2018 to work on a VR project, and I'd never done it before. But um, the team at Avandu, shout out Avandu, um, the, and also the team at Black Rhino who have the tech, um, they were just like, have you ever used Tilt Brush? I'm like, no, do you want to? I'm like, say less, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just went there, and you just learn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes learning is hard, especially if you're an artist, because, or at least for me, I base a lot of like my confidence in my craft because of my experience. So being vulnerable and green is a hard thing, but it's so necessary, especially now where the field is changing by the second. You always have to stay teachable and again, stay in community because you don't know who's opening the door for you. Yeah, and uh, as you're talking about, about learning, uh, Brian, I have met so many self-taught animators and, and gamers and, and you know, so there is a huge gap in terms of capacity building. You know, as you have been uh, working to build an ecosystem uh, of the animation industry, what are the challenges that you're seeing and how can government and academia and other key players play a role in fulfilling those gaps? So I'd first like to say that um, there's nothing wrong with being self-taught. Yes. Um, a lot of the things that we've learned over time, it's things that we've taught ourselves. However, how I see um, government, academia, um, <clears throat> coming into play in terms of uh, creating that capacity, it's by building a pipeline. So first of all, you're looking at, if you're looking at academia, um, being, providing the facilities or the capacity to be able to train animators um, in these different um, fields. Uh, when we were growing up, like Nadia said, most of the guys who wanted to go into unconventional careers were told, mm. get a real job. Yeah. That has been the experience growing up. Um, just to pick from my own example, I think when, when I was young and growing up watching cartoons or everything, my folks would um, discourage me from that. But when we started Nikon and they're asking, so what are you doing? What's your job? Because like, they can't grasp the capacity of what we're doing. You tell them we work with cartoons and comic books. Yeah. And they still tell you to get a real job. So at that time, there wasn't a lot of schools teaching um, animation. There wasn't a lot of schools teaching, um, say, illustration or that kind of thing. I think the only one I knew at the time was Shang Tao. And uh, I know a lot of animators have gone through Shang Tao. So number one, the establishment of more facilities or more institutions that are teaching this. It can be within the universities. It can be standalone um, institutions that support this. And then from there, you're looking at um, uh, industry players uh, who are taking up this talent, either by mentorship, employment, or just um, uh, internship opportunities for them to grow. And whatever they're learning, whatever the talent uh, from the school is learning, they're able to come and ap apply it in the real world. And the real world is able also to show them what's happening. And that way the industry grows. So it's an exchange of ideas, an exchange of knowledge, an exchange of talent. Mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, when you get to the government, uh, the government can step in by uh, providing policy that supports um, largely the animation industry, mm -hmm. but also um, the growth of... Uh, studios, the growth of uh, um, guys who want to get equipment, you're, lo you're looking at taxation regimes. How is it making it favorable for guys to import machinery or to 
to be able to get whatever they need to grow this industry because this equipment is not cheap. Yeah. Like Hato said, animation is expensive. Yeah. So government has to play its role because it has to provide a conducive environment for yeah. any industry in this country to grow. And animation is not an exception. Yeah. So once we have a pipeline that comes all the way from uh, capacity building to um, mentorship or just uh, helping the industry grow from uh, an, uh, an industry perspective and then government chipping in and uh, making it possible for, for, for the animation industry to thrive, mm -hmm. then we're able to start seeing um, the industry grow. And also even just directly, uh, government agencies, government departments uh, giving work to animators mm -hmm. at that level, it makes it a bit more um, acceptable. Like I'd say, from a long time, if you looked at animation, for you, that's a cartoon. If you're an adult, yeah. that's a cartoon. Yeah. But we are seeing it grow to a place where a lot of ads are animated. Yeah. And their parents, all my older generation kind of folks, are beginning to accept animation as something that's with us. And it's, it's a career that someone can go to. Like yeah. a friend of mine said, they were seated at a restaurant and they're talking to someone, an older someone from the older generation. And like, so what do you do? I do animation. And incidentally, something he had worked on came on the telly and said, yeah, that's what I do. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, and that's what we want to see. If the pipeline is in place, then it becomes more acceptable and we see more people getting to it, government supporting it, mm. and then it grows. I yeah. feel that's, that's the way to go. Yes, and, and, and this, go Just on. to add, so I'll start from academia. So academia has come a long way. Since we started off at, as the association in 2007, um, the quality was really down, right? But now the quality is really amazing, okay? Um, we never used to have communication between the schools and the industry. Now that communication, that bridge is beginning to be fixed with the majority of the schools right now. And also, we need to also have to factor in the educational cap that we are at. A lot of the teachers that are teaching right now majority of them have diplomas and bachelors, right? So what the government can do to assist is probably start um, taking animators to, to, to get um, PhDs, you know? Get some higher education. Then bring back that, that um, education, that what they've learned here, and our standards will go up. Mm. Now, because we'll, right now we don't have, I think it's only, I think there's one that I know of that's doing degree courses. So that's how I would say the government can help. They can start taking people for more higher education and bring them back. Yeah, and, and still, still, still with you, uh, Hato. Uh, my question is, how does, because as Brian was speaking, yes, a pipeline is important. And uh, there's also that notion where you have people who are looking to build new ventures or invest into new industries, but they don't understand the animation industry just because they're not animators, you know? So how, how, how can a person or an, uh, uh, a company venture into the animation business, in your opinion? And is it lucrative, is it not lucrative? What, what are the different uh, touch points where one can join into um, that investment pipeline? Ah, okay, cool. So I think the easiest approach is, if you're an animator, partner with someone who knows business. <laughs> Start there. Right? So partnering with someone who knows business, because I've seen people try and multitask and then something goes down. Right? Um, okay, like me. <laughs> like, I think we are, we are talking about it. Um, we end up multitask and we are, we are jack of all trades and a master of one. But what we don't realize is that we actually, we have a limited amount of time in a day. Mm. Yeah? So if you partner with someone that knows business, that goes up. Uh, could you repeat the question, if you don't mind? Yeah, so, so uh, exactly what you're saying, yeah. like, because animation is an industry, which means it has to be managed as a business. You know, yeah. you can enter as an artist and, and, and do consulting work, but how do, you know, to, for, for it to, to be able to be lucrative and commercial, there has to be professional structures, there has to be um, business structures around it. And you have people, in the, and anyone can take this question, you have people who are maybe looking to venture into new businesses, but they have no idea that the in animation industry is viable and, and it's something that they can invest in. I remembered my call. So one thing we need to understand, mm -hmm. yeah, with the with our parents, our generation before. These guys are post-colonial. As we, we didn't experience that. Mm -hmm. So they had very set rules. Um, they used to get work, uh, they used to have, I would say, limited 
things in what they could do. <laughs> I think so things have kind of changed. Now we have more people with more um, no expertise yeah. and before there was less people with more with, with more with that how do I say um probably someone can help me. There, there, there was more opportunity there's more options, then. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there was more options. Yes. So we need to understand that our parents before have that mindset. So it's up to us to show them that this is like I'll give you an example uh, that this is lucrative. I'll um, give you an example. Like I was talking to my grandfather and he was like, eh, you want to do cartoons? Yeah. And uh, uh, Tom and Jerry came on TV. And he, we're watching Tom and Jerry and he's laughing. And I'm like, dude, how much you watching K uh, Tom and Jerry in Kenya? Where did you, you imagine how much money they're making? Mm. So he was like, oh. So it's up to us to make, it, make a business proposal mm. that makes sense. Partner with people who know business. You, you figure out what's good with you and find someone who's good at what they do and you partner. Yes, uh, which brings a very important, go on, Nadia. Yeah, and if I may add to that as well, um, I think we also need to have a culture that has more spaces like this, where we speak about ourselves and our process. Because yeah. I think when, an, when animation became, like when it scaled up to become industrial, as much as there was practice, there was also exposure of process. Mm. So I remember when I was a kid, I used to love watching all these like behind the scenes clips or well, Disney behind like his fake bookcase and the globe like, hi, I'm old. Like, and you're like, this is how we make animation. Or this is who we are. And to actually write our stories and publish them. I know that's already started. There was a book on Kenyan comics that was released, I think, two years ago. Mm. Like, I think we're beginning to be autobiographical out mm. of necessity. And I think we need to continue with that. Because people want to know. Mm. They want to know. And if it's somebody that looks like you, and somebody who looks like somebody they know, they'd be more yeah. willing to take the plunge, I yeah. think. You want to add to that, Sim? No, I actually agree with, with all what you're saying. Uh, um, maybe my point would be, um, as you're saying, like communities, communities usually bring up a lot because um, at times you might get stuck somewhere. And uh, you, because, okay, let me give you an example. At times I work on projects that, uh, that I have to like look for a different route to take just because I had, um, I faced a problem. But then again, um, once I look up uh, like uh, on Reddit, maybe someone posted this, uh, something similar and I actually get to know about that problem. So you see, um, communities are also like, they're really, really important. Mm. And like building up on each other, that's all. I think that's all that matters because um, that's how industries are, are, are brought about. That's how companies come up because you might actually find your business partner in like, uh, maybe he replied to a comment or something of the sort. Yeah. Mm. I also like what Nadia said about mm. documenting the process. Um, I'm a strong believer that um, every every part of the process needs to be documented, not just the successes, mm. but the failures as well. Mm. Because more often than not, you learn more from your failures than you do from your success. If only the success bit of it is um, portrayed or documented or highlighted, then it becomes easy for someone to get um, a, sen a false sense of... Um, of, of success um, in terms of, I look at someone who's successful in animation, probably I look at Hato and Tsunami Studio and they're doing great work. Mm -hmm. And immediately I think I want to be an animator for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And it's, it's a thing that happens a lot. I don't want to get into animation for the wrong reasons, but if I'm able to see the back end of things, I see how he started out, what went wrong, probably um, he lost equipment and he had to start from scratch. Yeah. Um, I'm able to see the endurance or the process that it took for him to get to where he got to. Mm. And more often than not, if there's a challenge that someone experienced, then I um, probably have a, s a certain set of skills yeah. that will help me to overcome the challenge that he went through. And then I'm learning from his mistakes mm. as well as his successes. Mm. And I'm able to pass that, that on to someone else and tell them, um, I was watching some so-and-so doing something. This is where they failed. I feel this is how they would have gone about it. Mm. And overall, we enrich the whole experience or the whole industry through shared experiences. And that comes back to what uh, Steve is saying about community. So it's all interlinked. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would like to conclude this conversation with exactly that, you know, key failures and key lessons from each of you, starting with you, Nadia. <laughs> Failure. Um, we know it well. Um, I think key lessons, um, communication is key. Like for me, 
um, my nature is that if I make a mistake, my instinct would be to like clam up and like the shame won't allow me to communicate with my client or with my team. And I've frustrated a lot of people with this. And I think it's taken a lot of growth to be like, okay, I messed up, I'm sorry, I do, or I don't know how to do this. Mm. And to like open up your process so that people can see where your weaknesses are. I mm. think that for me has been a long and an ongoing lesson. Mm. And even as an animator, the whole point is to communicate. Like how can you communicate with a drawing that's as clear as possible, that gives just enough information because you're drawing millions of these drawings. So communication and clarity. Um, I think resilience, um, so when, not, not if, when you mess up, like how do you go back? Go back to the same desk, the same desk that betrayed you yesterday, <laughs> and like draw again, like just you have to try again, you have to keep going. Um, that, in terms of like strengths, I think I'm curious by nature, and I think that has carried me very far. I think you always have to be inquisitive, like if there's something you want to learn, go and learn about it. Like as an animator, you have to be like a consistent observer of life. Like I always have a sketchbook with me, I'm always stealing sketches. Be curious, be inquisitive. And yeah, I think I'll leave it at those two. Who wants to go next? Steven. <laughs> Maybe I'll go next. Um, talking about failures, I think I've failed a lot, to be honest. Mm. Um, I, and because the uh, thing is, I usually experiment a lot with things. As I said, um, I think of something, I look it up, um, I try it out. If it doesn't work, I put it in the shelf. And then maybe a couple of weeks, months, years later, maybe the solution has come up. So I go back to where I was. Where did I mess up? So let me see if I can fix it now. And then uh, eventually, it, it usually ends up paying off because maybe um, I go back with more knowledge than I had previously and the execution is actually more stellar than it, it would have been before. Um, uh, on the, on like the strengths, or rather what I'd like to like push out is I think discipline. Like you have to be really disciplined uh, when uh, like right now you're working from home. Let me give an example. <laughs> we're working from home. Um, you might wake up whatever time you might wake up. Uh, you, you have things that you have to do. But then again, the fact that you are working from home does not mean that you need to slack because guys in the world are not sleeping. If you sleep, man, guys are not sleeping. And if you want to be at the forefront, you actually have to outdo yourself and outdo the other person who is staying awake. So um, always keep learning, always be disciplined and try to push, like push beyond, push beyond what, uh, or rather push beyond what you did yesterday. And eventually you'll always become better at what you're doing. Great. What about you, Hato? Okay, so for me, I'd like to start with uh, a quote, not a quote, but a statement that a friend of mine called Ernest, he works at Chomoka, and we are having this conference meeting with a, uh, our social, we are at a social hangout, we virtual meeting with our an, other animators. And he asked this brilliant question. He asked, why are you doing what you're okay. doing? What's the why? Right? And uh, I would like to start with that. So you need to understand why you're doing it. Um, my failures, my failures, I feel it's been more from people. <laughs> uh, I t I'm, a, I'm an empath. <laughs> so I tend to, I like energy, I like smiles. Uh, and also the, the push, the nudge from people. So um, I've become stronger, but I'll say it's from people. So you need to have a big understanding. And you need to understand what your vision is in life. What is your goal? Um, if you understand the why, it doesn't matter who comes in and out of your life, you can still keep on going because you have that, that vision. Um, strengths. I second what uh, Nadia said, communication. I also second him. The other thing is also character over, character over talent. This is very important. Mm. Uh, having that as a strength, knowing how to balance your pride and your hum humility will get you very far. Mm. This, that you just need that right amount of assertiveness and kindness, and you will move forward. Thank you. That's powerful. Right. Um, for myself, I'll speak from a Nikon perspective rather than a personal one. Um, what happens to be our greatest failure once also incidentally was a, or is our greatest strength and that's uh, being ambitious. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'll give you an example, a very practical example. In 2015, we set out to do Nikon as a twice a year engagement, yeah. so a biannual, a biannual event. Um, what we quickly learned is that um, content isn't churned out as quickly as we'd like it to be so that we can have a double event because what we realized, people will tell you, but I just exhibited in April. I don't have any more content to, mm. to, to exhibit again. And then coming through the sponsorship bit of it, because we do work with sponsors, they tell you, but we just sponsored you this year. So a lot of times we found out that our, uh, our ambitiousness, um, if, if that's the right word, mm. being ambitious has, ha has made us push our boundaries mm. a little bit too far. But on the flip side, it's a strength because being ambitious has always helped us um, at every edition or every next thing that we do for Nikon. And this is a conversation I remember us having with Hato at his office at some point. Um, we're also trying to push the boundaries um, of what we do. So we always want to try and top what we are doing, what we did last time. And Hato made a joke about it and said, if Nikon guys go silent, um, they're planning something. So that has always been the strength that we've always tried to say, be better than we were last time and be as ambitious as possible um, to the point of wanting to bring Stan Lee to Nikon. Sadly, he passed on, rest yeah. in peace. So that being ambitious has always helped us to push the boundaries, but sometimes we've bitten a bit more off than we can chew. That's yeah. what I can say. Great. I'd like to add, yes. so we, we have to be really grateful to people like uh, Nikon, Movie Java, and Kalasha and KFC. The, these events have really helped cup, uh, take us where we're going, mm -hmm. right? Because I've even seen Nadia at Nikon. I think I bought a poster there. You, I've, I think I've uh, seen your virtual reality somewhere. This, these events are really helping us out, and we always need to attend to mm -hmm. support what they're doing. Yeah. So I would like just one, um, in, 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 in like one minute, yeah, if you can talk about your vision for the animation industry in Kenya, Africa, next five years, ten years, where do you want to see it? Each one of you. You go first, Farin. So I think where I'd like to see the animation industry in Africa is being able to export African talent to the world, mm -hmm. Kenyan talent, African talent to the world, the same way we've consumed years and years of Western talent, mm -hmm. and us to do the same thing. Um, Africans are generally storytellers. We've been telling stories for a while. Mm. And uh, as I mentioned uh, some time ago, there's been a dispensation for every kind of story that was told. Mm. There was a Western time, there was a Native American time, if you're looking at Hollywood, uh, the mafia movies and everything. So it's time for Africa to be able to export that content so that we are engulfed across the world. You travel to the US, you travel to Europe, you travel to New Zealand, to China you should be able to catch animated content from Africa. That's the vision. Yeah. Imagine if Abunuasi becomes a global. <laughs> Do exactly. you guys remember Abunuasi? Exactly, yeah. How, how amazing that will be. What about you, Stephen? Um, for me, I think um, is like having animation like uh, as a big, very big industry. Like wh whenever, whenever a kiddo tells, t t tells the parent, I want to grow up, I want to be an animator. Like mm. they actually back them up and like support them all the way up just like you did with your son. That's yeah. another thing. Like, yeah. uh, whenever, like, I, I want them to earn job, to, to earn money out of it through jobs. Um, and also, um, I'm looking forward to VR being also a very big and integral part in it. Yeah. Because there are so many things that you can do with VR that, um, some, okay, you might think it's just games, but to be honest, come at Black Rhino offices. Let me just put that plug. And like we'll take you through some of the things that you can actually do with the tech. It's not just games. So I'm looking forward to a, like a big industry that will boom and actually offer people lots and lots of jobs. Yeah. Nadia, mm. I think for me, I look forward to our space developing mature properties, like intellectual prop pieces of intellectual property, mm. and licensing them outward. So if I go to Italy, there's kids buying a lunchbox with my character, and that money comes to me. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> Not to, no shade to any other, like, um, yeah. big um, licenses out there. Um, and I think just an opportunity to trade so that as much as we've engaged and consumed their properties, to have us, like, give back as well as, as we've gotten. Hato? Um, I would, in five years... 
I would like us to be able to specialize. I would say right now, currently, we're really good at pre-production uh, in animation. We can do script, we can do, we're really great at character design, concepts, storyboarding, and voice acting. If we can be able as a community to actually package ourselves and sell, our, sell, our, sell ourselves an outsourced destination for pre-production, we'll go very far. Wow, that is powerful. Thank you so much. I hope you have really enjoyed uh, the animation summit. I, I mean, what I'm learning and uh, what I'm gathering from all of this, like we say in Africa, it takes a village. It's going to take a village to uh, propel the animation industry forward. It's going to take uh, investors, people looking to building ventures in animation. It's going to take collaboration. It's going to take parents, you know, uh, listening to their kids and nurturing their talents and supporting them so that they can pursue their dream in this creative industry. It's going to take governments putting the right policies and the right measures and building a conducive environment. So it's going to take a village and we are on that journey. So congratulations, all of you, for all the great things that you're doing. Uh, continue watching and keeping up with what is happening today and tomorrow on the fourth edition of uh, the Kalasha um, Summit. Hope you've enjoyed. From me, Irene, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Irene. <laughs>